Today, folks, we are looking at power. Okay, that's a uh, touch on the aggressive side, but uh, I'm gonna allow it. Today, we are checking out a way to get basically endless supply of power anywhere, anytime, with some pretty sweet products from the guys at Blue Eddy. No, Blue Eddy is not the sister company of Yeti, nor are they the northern cousin of Bigfoot. <laughs> really heavy on the Star Wars references very early in this video. <laughs> They make power stations of all shapes and sizes, from very compact guys like this little AC2A, all the way up to large whole home systems bigger than this guy here that can run your whole house off the grid basically indefinitely. They also make a whole host of solar panels to accompany your power stations and keep you powered from the sun. I'm still a little amazed by the uh, wizardry of that. As I have been starting to do this overland build and I started researching power stations, while going all primitive and Daniel Boone style camping is nice sometimes, it's also nice to go truck camping and super handy to have modern conveniences like lights, keep your phones charged, a fridge to keep all your food cold, diesel heater, a heated blanket in the winter. Hell, I've seen that now they even have ACs you can run in your tent at night to get a good night's sleep when it's 95 degrees at night, but you still wanna get out and get some camping in without having to sleep through long hot nights of viciously aggressive sweaty swamp ass. Nobody likes swamp ass. It smells like like a used diaper filled with Indian food. Oh! And all this is made possible by having a good power station. Camping is just scratching the surface for what you can do with these things. They're also great for general preparedness like emergency power. Like for me living here in Florida, about July through October, when hurricanes are lined up in the Atlantic like a miserable conveyor belt of suck, power outages are a real issue. You can use power stations to keep necessities rolling, fridges, some lights, fans, shit like such, running basically indefinitely. And what makes these better than gas power generators, they're almost completely silent. Mine is just a tad bit of fan noise. And bonus, they won't kill you. I shit you not. Every hurricane season, there is at least one dumbass that kicks it because they ran their gas generator inside, got carbon monoxide poisoning, and took that forever nap. Personally, kind of think that that's just Darwinism stepping in, sprinkling a little chlorine in the old gene pool. These are much easier and safer than a traditional generator. And as long as the damn sun isn't burnt out, which if that happens, we've got much bigger problem. The solar panels basically unlimited power with no running out of fuel or having to store a whole shitload of gas or worrying if your gas stores went bad none of that crap so i reached out to blue eddie and they were kind enough to send me three different models and a solar panel to check out i've had them for a little over a month maybe a month almost two months now so today we're going to look at some specs and what i think is kind of the use cases for each of the models we're also going to check out a solar panel to keep these babies powered up when you're off grid. For full disclosure, because I always like to be as transparent with my relationships with company as possible with you guys, I did reach out to Blue Eddy for this review and they are sponsoring this video and provided the products in this video. So do with that information as you will, but as always, I'm going to give you my honest thoughts and feedback on these products. Okay, first off, this hit some of the things that all these units have in common. First, they all use lithium iron phosphate batteries. Well, that's great, Jeremy, but what the hell does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm sure there's way more stuff to this, but the short and ugly is that generally speaking, companies use one of two battery types, lithium iron phosphate, which is what these guys have in them, or lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries, while lighter, do about 500 cycles before they can only get 80% capacity. So after 500, they start to degrade. And that is a shelf life of about two to three years before you can start to see some degradation in the battery's performance. Whereas lithium iron phosphate, even though they are heavier, that changes from 500 cycles to 3,000 to 3,500 cycles, and 10 year shelf life before you start to see battery degradation. Some companies use the lithium ion batteries and they are lighter, but for me, I would much rather have a substantially longer life on my battery, a lot more cycles so that I can get more life out of my investment than save a little bit of weight. Two, all these offer pass-through charging, which means they can be used while they're plugged in and be used as a UPS as they have a 20 millisecond switchover. UPS stands for uninterrupted power source 
I think, which means you can plug the power station into the wall, then plug your devices into the power station. The power station will pass the power through to your device until there is an interruption in the wall power. And then within 20 milliseconds, it will switch over to the battery power of the power station and keep powering your device with no interruption and not affecting your device in any way. I know some folks that hook computers and other sensitive items like that up to UPSs for situations like power outages. All three work with an app that does allow you to monitor and adjust settings via your phone, which can be handy with some of the deeper functions in these things and changing settings and whatnot. And also just maybe if you're up in your tent, you wanna check your battery life or if you're over at a campfire or in a different room, you can just pull up the app, check it out, gives you all the information about input, output, battery life, all the goods. They all have the same very nice, where's my button there? See if I can turn this one on, there we go. They all have the same very nice display that is sufficiently bright, even in bright sun, and offers all the information you could ever really possibly need. I really dig the displays on these. Battery life, wattage currently being pulled, input, estimated time till charge or, or empty, depending on if you're charging or using it. Lots of really good info. There are also pure sine wave inverters in all three of these, so no worries about running any sensitive electrical devices. And all also carry the Blue Eddy five-year warranty. All right, got some room on the table. Getting into the specifics of the individual models and starting with the Kevin Hart of the three, the AC2A. This little guy is super compact with just under 10 inches long, just under seven inches tall, six inches deep and weighing in it just under eight pounds. This is the portability king of the bunch. With this guy being the smallest, we also have the least capacity of the three with just under 205 watt hours. Hold up. Actually, you know what, we might need to touch on watt hours real quick just to kind of explain what that means if you don't know, because we're gonna talk about watt hours a lot going forward. And if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, it's gonna be real like a waste of your time. And this is an extremely dumbed down version. We're talking super generalizations going on here. So don't any of you electrical smarty pants come at me. We get it, you're smart. Just these are generalizations just to try to get the idea of what a watt hour is across. So just put your protractors away for a second. Basically, watt hours describes capacity of the battery. Pretty much anything you use will have wattage on it. So light bulbs are a good example, right? Here on the side of this guy, it tells you this bulb uses nine watts. So if I wanted to run this light bulb for one hour, it would use nine watt hours of power. If we wanted to see how long we could run this bulb on this battery, we can divide the 205 watt hour capacity of this station by the nine watts it takes to run this light bulb, which would give us 22.7. So I could run this bulb for almost 23 hours on a full charge from this power station. Now say I wanted to run this bulb and say these LED strips, these guys right here, I actually really like these. They're like uh, magnetic. You can stick them to stuff and light stuff up. Very nice. But I know these use 15 watts of energy. So if I wanted to run this light and these, I would have to take the nine watts of the bulb, the 15 watts here, that gives me 24 watts total. I would divide the 205 watt hour capacity by the 24 watts it takes to run both of these, and I would get about eight and a half hours of runtime on a full battery. Pretty simple shit, right? Hopefully the math is mathing and y'all get what I'm talking about. This should give you kind of a rough idea of what watt hours means and how you can use it when you're trying to pick the right power station for what you're trying to do with it. This little guy, the AC2A, is the smallest in size and in capacity watt hours. It comes in at 204.8 watt hour capacity with a 300 watt max output, but will surge up to 600 watts. Input wise, it can handle 270 watts of AC or 200 watts of solar, which is pretty nice because it'll charge good and fast. You're looking at like a little over an hour plugged into an AC, probably more like an hour and a half if you're plugged into a solar panel that's pump pumping out at least 200 watts. It has really nice screen on the front, like we mentioned before, gives you all that good info that we talked about earlier. You don't have to deal with all that watt hour math because it tells you right here on the screen, let me turn this guy on, it tells you right here on the screen, the input wattage you're getting, output wattage you're using, what your battery is, if you're using AC, DC, and what the battery life time is looking like. You have buttons to switch on your AC side and your DC side. You have a plug up here for your solar panels. You have a plug here for DC, which is like uh, your you know basic cigarette lighter. And then on this side, you've got two AC inputs that are 100 
120 volts, 300 watt max on these guys. Do people even still call the, these things cigarette lighter? I don't think I've seen an actual cigarette lighter in a car for like a good 10, 15 years easily. So when I say cigarette lighter port, do you guys know, does, are the people, am I still dealing with people old enough to remember when they were, maybe they got a more technical name. I, I don't know. I grew up in an era of your parents smogging you out in cars with cigarette smoke, so I call them cigarette, cigarette lighter parts. <laughs> you also have 100 watt USB-C, which is really nice, and a standard USB or USB-A 5 volt port. Pretty nice assortment of connections. You can power just about anything you could possibly need with this guy. Side note though, anytime you can use this with the DC side, DC is much more efficient because you're not running the inverter like you do over on the AC side. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck and efficiency with DC stuff. So when you can, use the DC. Round the side over chunk, you have your input, which is a nice one. It's just a standard kind of three-prong computer cable, which is really nice because it keeps it super simple. And it is included in the box along with uh, a solar power cable to plug in up here. This little guy works great for super small portable things. Things like charging your phones, running a couple lights. It's small enough you can just throw it up in a tent at night while you're camping to charge all your devices, run a couple lights, maybe a small fan. In a power outage, you can use it kind of like in the same way. You can easily just pick this thing up and tote it around, carry it from room to room, and power a couple lights in the room you're in. I use this thing a lot of times when I'm working on my truck. I can take it out to my truck and power some lights to light things up so I don't have to run extension cords, which is really nice. I've even used this thing to power lights and when I'm shooting camera stuff outdoors and I need to run my sliders and whatnot, I used to have to run like extension cords, real pain in the ass. Now I just take this little guy with me. I would not say this is the best choice for running larger things like portable refrigerator refrigerators, diesel heaters, etc. You could definitely do it. Depending on the fridge, I'd say you get maybe 12, 14 hours out of this guy. Probably safely run a diesel heater overnight. You could use it in a pinch, but I would probably recommend a larger unit if your main purpose is stuff like that. Normal price on this guy is 249 bucks. Time of filming this video, it's on sale for 179, which is about 87 cents a watt hour. Pretty cool, super portable, super handy, nice integrated handle. I mean, you could take this thing anywhere with you. It's like the size of a lunchbox. Stepping up to what might be the perfect one, the middle of the road unit, the AC70. The AC70 is like the AC2A's big brother that maybe did maybe like a little cycle or two a trend. Pretty much the exact form factor, except more beefed up, more powerful with, uh, I think, an extra port or a couple extra ports. We are looking at 10 inches tall, about 12 and a half inches wide, and just over eight inches deep with a weight of 22 and a half pounds. We get a big bump in capacity and output with 768 watt hours and a thousand watts max output with up to 2000 watts in power lifting mode or surge. We also get an increase in AC input. So this one will take 950 watts input AC, which will allow you to charge this guy 80% in just 45 minutes when plugged into wall power. And we also get a nice bump in the sunshine juice with up to 500 watts of solar, allowing you to charge this thing up solar in about two hours on a good sunny day with the right panels. A substantially larger and more powerful battery, but not much longer charge times because of the inputs on this, which is nice. Layout is almost exactly the same, same great display, so we won't go into that every time. So our DC and solar ports are on the side. With opposite of that, we have our two AC ports. And like on the last one, USB ports on the middle. This time, however, we have an additional USB-C, so a total of two 100 watt USB-Cs and two standard USBs. However, we do bump up to 12 volts on the standard USBs on this model. Same great little uh, three prong computer situation port jobber over there for charging. They do include all three cords with this one. So you got one AC power cord, one solar cord, and one DC cigarette lighter uh, port cord. I wish they included the 12 volt cable in the smaller version also, but I guess you gotta save cost somewhere. You only get two cords with the smaller one. You get all three with this one. With this one, you still have a really good size, super portable, a little over 20 pounds, and about the size of one of those, you know, those like a uh, little Coleman cooler lunchbox things, about that size. It's got the handle on the back. I mean, really easy to maneuver around. 
not too cumbersome. You can chuck this thing in your car, in your truck, super easy, take it just about anywhere, move it from room to room in your house with no major problems. And with the larger capacity and max output, not only can you do all the things you can on the smaller one, you can do it longer and is more capable of handling some of the larger tasks that was a little risky on the smaller one. I wouldn't say risky, but a little, you know, not optimal on the smaller one. Like your portable camp fridge type situation, climate, fridge, all that's very variable, but average 50, 60 hours. So you can get multiple days out of it with still having enough juice to charge other devices, run some lights, some fans, etc. And with the solar, you can charge this thing back up during the day when the sun's out, and you can pretty much have all your creature comforts good and ready to go pretty much indefinitely. More than capable of camping, overlanding, type power station, and with its size, might just be the perfect for that particular application. But it also has enough to be pretty capable as an emergency backup for like your home. It could power a lot of household items, keep your phones and devices all charged. With that power lifting mode, <laughs> I think I say power lifting, I think it's some dude doing snatches, but <laughs> power lifting mode of up to 2000 watts, it can even handle some of the more energy intensive devices like hair dryers, kettles, space heaters, stuff like that, and potentially flex and even running a full-size fridge in a pinch. At 760, 768? Yeah, 768 watt hours on this one. It is on the smaller size for running like full-size fridges and stuff like that. But like a lot of modern fridges pull as little as like 150 or 200 watts when running, and they don't run all the time. They only run when the compressor's on and they're cooling. So it's not like you're just running 150 to 200 watts constantly. So you could potentially get like a day out of this guy and then recharge during the day, rinse and repeat. Probably not optimal for full size appliance, but in a pinch, it could probably save your butt. The AC70 is also expandable with extension batteries. It doesn't increase the max output, but it does dramatically increase the capacity. You can go from like the 768 watt hour capacity to nearly 3,800 watt hours, depending on what uh, expansion battery you go with. And the last time I checked, now, this is all, all these prices are as the time I'm recording this video. So I don't know if, you know, sales come and go, but at the time of this video, they were running these guys, normal price is $6.99. They had them on sale for $4.49, which is like 58 cents a watt hour, which is ridiculously good price. Okay, last up, big boy. <sighs> Last of the power stations, but certainly not least, the AC200L. If the AC70 was the big brother, the AC200 is like the mountain from Game of Thrones or like uh, the Brian Shaw <laughs> the power stations. This big dog is capable of just about anything you wanna throw at it. 2,048 watt hours, 2,400 watts of output with power lifting up to 3,600 watts. Watch, <laughs> 3,600 watts there isn't much this guy can't handle. This one is also very scalable with a bunch of different expansion batteries, taking this guy to a possible 8,192 watt hours. That is more juice than the Mr. Olympia competition. Still portable with relatively compact size uh, and very nice handles on the side. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little chunkier, a little heavier, but still very portable. You can still move it from room to room in your house during a blackout. You can throw this thing in your car, in your truck when you're camping, car and truck camping without any issues whatsoever, but definitely the largest and heaviest of the ones we've looked at. This one comes in at a 14.4 inches tall, 16.5 inches wide, 11 inches deep, and a girthy 62.4 pounds. So certainly portable, but she's a thick girl. Same great display. Why ain't my display on? What's happening? I can't see, I'm trying to, I'm doing this blind. I'm blind, there we go. Same basic layout, DC cigarette port on this side. You have two 100 watt USBs, which is nice, and two standard USB ports. But for some reason, on the standard ones, they went back to five volts with these, which I don't totally understand, because the smaller unit, they're 12 volts on this unit. They're I don't really get that, but whatever. Upside is you do now have four AC plugs and one 30 amp outlet for an RV hookup, which is a very welcome addition. On the side of this big boy, we have a dedicated expansion battery port, an AC input, and a DC input. Now I will say this one, the inputs are a little different and we'll talk about that when we go to the cons, but nevertheless, 
you got all your inputs. The good news is this guy allows for 2,400 watts of AC input and 1,200 watts of solar. So you were looking at an impressive hour and a half charge time by AC or about two and a half hours uh, with the right solar setup, which is pretty impressive for a big old girthy girl like this. Like I mentioned earlier, this unit, especially with the solar panels that we're gonna talk about in just a minute, this guy will keep you powered up for an indefinite amount of time. Plenty of power for anything I can think of when it comes to like overlaying and camping. Diesel heaters, heated blankets, portable ACs, portable fridges, lights galore, recharging everything you could possibly, I mean shit, anything really. Plenty of ass in this guy to do all that stuff. This also is probably the best option for like an emergency home backup with 2,400 watt output and 3,600 watts of uplift or power lift or whatever they call it. It frees up a lot more bandwidth for your, for your more power hungry home items and being able to run just more things at once in general. It's really a way better option and better suited for running home refrigerators and for a much longer period of time, things like that. And with the expansion batteries, taking this to over 8,000 watt hours, this could be a very capable emergency shit hit the fan situation backup power source. Definitely something to consider if you're looking to flush out your off-grid camping or emergency preparedness plan, which you should all do. You don't have to live in Hurricane Central down here where I'm at to need an emergency plan. Shit hits the fan everywhere on the globe and you need to plan for when it does. Current pricing, sale price $13.99. That puts this down at 68 cents a watt hour. Plenty cheap enough for some peace of mind and for some creature comforts when you're off-grid. Normal price is like two grand, by the way. So $13.99 is a good deal. I'm just saying. Blue Eddy also offers, this is gonna be really hard to show on here. So it's gonna, hey, I'm peeking over. They also offer a bunch of different options in the world of solar panels. I had a few other brands and I'll say that this by far is the best like quality feel. Uh, seems to be really well made. I'm not gonna leave this up here because this is pretty stupid. I was put it down flat. This guy seems to be super well made. This unit I have here is the PV350, which means 350 watts of capacity in this guy. I'm really glad they do that, by the way. The PV350, 350 watts. I like it when brands keep shit simple. Plenty of companies name shit, just random stuff. There's nothing, it's easy to go PV350. Oh, that's 350 watts. Why don't more companies do this type of thing? This is a portable fold out, kind of uh, semi-flexible mon mono crystalline silicone solar panel. Mono crystalline, crystalline. You know I'm not good with words. Mono crystalline, mono crystalline. You get the picture. Folded up, we're looking at 35.6 by 24.1, about two and a half inches thick and weighing in at about 30 pounds. Some really nice carry handles on it. A little pouch here on the back, which is nice for storing the cables or any additional cables for hooking this guy up. You pop this guy open, has little supports that pop out on the back. They velcro to the back and they pop out to angle the panel. So that way it's pointed up at that bright thing that you don't want to stare at and it's trying to give you cancer all the time. <laughs> It's aimed up at the sun. Fully deployed, we are looking at 35.6 by 94.4 inches of sun converting Hogwarts magic, making light rays into 350 watts of go juice. Hopefully you guys understand how solar panels work. I really don't, but I do understand the basics. <laughs> when it says 350 watts, that means with good, bright, direct sun. If you are out on a cloudy day or it's in the shade, you're gonna have reduced performance and you're probably not gonna see that full 350. I still think it's straight wizardry though, honestly, that you can stick this guy out, open it up in the sun, and it turns sun into power. I don't, it's just wild to me. And I mean, I know this isn't any new technology, but it's still like freaking wizardry. And I'm not sure why, especially with me living here in the sunshine state, why I haven't taken advantage of things like this before. I'm a big fan of these power stations and I don't have too much in the cons list, but nothing is perfect. And if I don't give you jackals a little blood in the water, you guys will start screaming shill faster than Disney fucks up franchises. Quicker than Sig puts out new models of pistols. Faster than P. Diddy erases his hard drive. Too soon? <laughs>
First up, the AC2A. Kind of bums me out that they don't include the DC charging cord. They include a normal AC power cord and the solar panel cord was really nice, but I mean, how much would it cost them to throw in so you have all the cords to charge it? It is a little finicky to charge it with a larger solar panel because it only has 200 watts max of solar. And with my panel giving up, putting out 350 in bright sun, when I would plug it in, it would give me like over voltage errors. It wouldn't let it charge. So I had to actually fold one of the sides of the panel over to kind of reduce the amount of wattage the panel was taken in to get it to charge properly. Now, maybe I was doing something wrong, but it seems like it could just throttle that down internally. Not a huge deal but just something to be aware of. Moving on to the AC70, I don't really have any negative. That, that thing is pretty squared away, it's pretty awesome. If I was being really super picky, I would say it would be nice to have maybe one more AC outlet or maybe just a couple more outlets. You can all, never have enough outlets with stuff like that. But honestly, that one, that one's pretty hard to talk shit on. It, that one's pretty squared away. On the big boy, the AC200, a couple small gripes. One, not sure why they went uh, from the 12 volt USB-C or the standard USBs on the smaller AC70 and then went back to five volt USBs on the bigger AC200. I mean, it's really not a big deal at all, but it's just a strange choice in my opinion. If it's the bigger unit, you want everything to be bigger. I also wish they would have stuck with the standard three prong computer cable instead of going to the proprietary screw on kind of cable deals. I'm sure they did it for a reason and it is more secure because it screws in, but it's easier for me, A, for replacement with the three prong because that's a standard three prong uh, cable and also for cross compatibility between models it's nice if all the cords work with all the other ones so i can carry less cords again i'm sure the people at blue eddy will be like hey dumbass we did this for this reason because those maybe those cables can't take the amount of power but at the end of the day honestly all these are tiny little nitpicks but none of these are real issues. I can't believe I haven't gotten into these power stations sooner. I will definitely continue to update you guys on these as I use them more. You will be seeing them in a ton of the overlanding camping content we have planned in the future, and I will keep you guys updated on long-term usage. And as always, I will link everything down below, so if any of this stuff interests you, you know where to find it. This has probably already been a pretty long one, lots of stuff in here, but before we get out of here, we got to draw our winner from last week's giveaway. We're giving away a bottle of uh, my signature beard oil that I do with uh, Beard Brand, the Bold Fortune. Fantastic beard oil, by the way, if you haven't checked it out. And then we just dropped the uh, new red bandanas. We're giving away a bottle of the Bold Fortune and one of the new red bandanas. Links for both down below, just saying shameless plug. So the winner for last week is Casey Floyd. Congratulations, my brother. Casey says, truck looks so good, love the bed rack. Hashtag bold fortune. Well, Casey, thank you, my brother. Congratulations. Make sure you go to the about section on our YouTube channel, get our business email address on there, shoot us an email with your address, and we will get your winnings sent out to you ASAP. For next week's giveaway, or for the next uploads giveaway, I should say, because these days I'm not doing uploads every week. I, I know it's about 10, 12 days in between uploads, sometimes 14. I, give me a break, there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get back to one a week. I'm trying. But for next uploads giveaway, let's do let's do another bottle of Bold Fortune. That's always simple. Lots of you guys have beards. I've seen all your thumbnails and it smells glorious. Guaranteed to make your significant other happy. Contest rules are as always, you have to be a subscriber to both channels, both this channel and Jeremy Sars After Hours where we do our live streams and other stuff coming. You have to smash that like button. You have to sign up for our newsletter, which you can do down below. And comment down below this week, let's do hashtag Blue Eddy hashtag bold fortune that will enter you in and we will draw a winner live on the next upload all right folks well that wraps this one up lots of information on this one hopefully you guys found it helpful if you did feel free to smash that like button that always helps us out if you're not a subscriber please consider doing so we'd love to have you on board hope everybody's having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video put a panel the sun hits it and somehow it puts the sun juice into here and then I can take the sun juice and put it into here and then I can search the internet from sun. It's a crazy, crazy world we live in these days. If you took this kind of shit back 300 years ago, people would think you were a fucking wizard. I'm just saying.